Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to another episode of Disciples for All Nations. Uh, in today's episode, we want to talk about the concept of our honesty with God that people need to also feel. People need to see that we ourselves are not putting on a show, telling them, you know, life is perfect, there are no problems, uh, we're, we're fine. They have to know that being a Christian also means carrying your cross daily, it means that you need to face tribulation sometimes. But it has the promise of God's comfort within that tribulation. As the Lord said in John chapter 16, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Now many people don't like that side of Christianity. They say, oh, you know, the cross to bear, being honest, I have to uh, repent of my, my sins or change my ways. I have to um, be a different person but they don't realize that they're really not free or really living until they live in Christ or until Christ takes form in them or lives in them. As St. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So the idea of being honest with ourselves before God is essential. And people around us need to know that too. People need to know that we're not putting on a show. We are joyful in Christ, but we have our difficulties. We do have a cross to carry. We do struggle with things. It's not easy but it's always worth it. And God has overcome for us all right, already. Because of that, we believe in that authority that's been given us through our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a beautiful story in the New Testament that depicts a personality that was honest with God, a person that didn't lie about the mistakes they'd done, uh, that came up front and said what they did, and we see the results and the fruits of that honesty. That story takes us to Luke chapter 19. That story is the story of Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Many of you are familiar with him, but the story is very beautiful and very inspiring for us. It says, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he is going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Now we look at the beauty of our Lord Jesus here, how he searches for every one of us, wherever we may be, on top of a tree, hiding somewhere. He's always searching for us and convincing us and convicting us and reminding us that we are loved and that he wants to stay with us. So that invitation there reminds us of that. Even as the Lord said in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, when talking to the church of the Laodiceans, where he says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens to me, I will come in and dine with him. The Lord wants to sit with us and be in us forever and grant us to live with him and in him forever. So the question is, do we want the same? It's a matter of honesty, a matter of choice. So Zacchaeus responded to the invitation and rushed down and received our Lord Jesus joyfully. But when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So Zacchaeus gives us that example that I'm going to be honest with Jesus. Jesus welcomed me by inviting himself into my house, basically. And I'm going to go into to that invitation by bringing him into my house, into my life. Now, I can't stop there. I have to say, okay, now what? Lord, thank you for coming to me, but I got to be honest with you. I've done my share of mistakes. I've done things that I shouldn't have done. And I want to fix my mistakes. And he was honest and said, I give half of my goods to the poor. If I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. So he rectified his mistakes, or at least he tried to. But the Lord didn't even ask him that. It's just when someone comes clean with Christ, he does so out of the goodness of his heart. He doesn't need the reminders anymore. God begins, and if we respond to the call, the grace of God works in us and springs up in us things that we didn't even think we could do. Zacchaeus did that. Zacchaeus was able to say, I made mistakes, I'm fixing them, Lord. Help me fix them. And the Lord's response was such an encouragement. He told him, today salvation has come to this house. 
And that's the kind of thing we want to tell people. We want to inspire them and tell them, you know what? We can also be honest with God. And if they've done something wrong, to not be ashamed that God is ready and willing to forgive and forget. We just need to repent and confess and be honest and do our best to rectify our mistakes. And God is more than glad to help us do that. And that is a beautiful way to inspire people to come to Christ. So reading to them the passage from Zacchaeus' story, reminding them that honesty is essential for us to bridge that gap, that, that gap that sin caused in our life and kept us away and alienated us from God. If we can do the same with our personal life and encourage others to do the same and have them see it in our lives, it'll bring many to come to the realization that hiding things from God is not a win situation. We lose in the end. And God is willing to love us and help us with our honesty and fix things gladly because we were honest with Him. Now may God grant us that same resilience and that same honesty that we may truly be disciples for all nations and encourage others to be disciples for all nations. And glory be to God forever and ever.